Last week I made a reaction to the Geography Now for Germany. Really loved it. It was a great overview of pretty much all of Germany, not just its geography, but its history, its current culture, and just like everything in between. Really enjoyed it. And one thing I said I want to learn a bit more about is the actual states of Germany. I want to see if there's any differences, any similarities, how they compare uh, and just really educate myself a bit more on something I know really nothing about. So here it says it's called the Bundeslander, uh, which is the states of Germany. Let's watch this. Hey everybody, so as you know, we are working on the scripts for the next few country episodes, which means this is going to have to be a filler week. Heavily, heavily, heavily requested. This one is going to be on the states or Bundesländer of Germany. Germany is a powerhouse nation. Obviously, it is the largest economy in Europe, and it holds a significant role of geopolitical activity that links an entire continent. As you'll soon find out, each state in Germany is pretty unique and diverse in their own way. They each kind of have their own specialty, and some have unique dialects. Before we get into this, though, I just want to let you know that one of my favorite sponsors is working with us once again Satera. For those of you that don't know Satera is a geography game website. Yeah, pretty appropriate for this channel, don't you? German. I totally recommend you check them out. I've played this game. It's great. It's worth 16 Bundesländer of Germany. First one, Baden-Württemberg, capital Stuttgart. This is like the other southern state besides Bavaria. It was formed by the joining of three other former states, these. It's kind of like the luxury car state, you know, they have the headquarters of Mercedes-Benz and Porsche. Lots of manufacturing going down here, it's very busy. They're also known for having the Black Forest where all those oh, okay, fairy yeah. tales were is. inspired off of by the Brothers Grimm, which yeah. also plays into the unique Swabian culture that they're known for down here. Swabians have possibly the weirdest dialect in all of Germany. A lot of Germans can't even understand them and it incorporates really? a lot of weird unique festivals. A lot of times they wear these costumes based off of the fairy tales that came from here. Switzerland is like their best friend. They really just kind of get each other. A lot of Swiss people come over and travel to this area of Germany and they're known for being really smart with their money and handling it very well which also kind of means a lot of people think they're kind of stingy. That's like the stereotype. Geography well, Jessica says it is a sacrilege to throw stuff out out, even if it's a broken TV or something. Bavaria or Bayern, capital. So U. yeah, that was just the first state. Really interesting that they've got like their own festivals to do with the fairy tales that originate from there and the part about the luxury cars being based there. But this is one thing I like about Germany as well is how it not only has its own culture, but it also takes like joint culture from the countries it borders as well. Obviously being from the UK, we're an alien nation. I guess being Scotland, England, Wales and Ireland all kind of like, have some inspiration from each other or certain things we share in culture. Uh, but Germany being bordered to so many like very different countries and it can take like very different culture from each. I really like that and it's quite nice. And Bavaria I think is probably for me one of the most like well-known states. Uh, as somebody who knows no nothing about the, the differences between the, the states of Germany. Munich. This is the largest state in size and the second yeah, largest in terms of population. It's kind of like the home of all those, you know, perpetuated German stereotypes that became famous mm -hmm. through American culture. You know, Lederhosen, Dirndls, those big one liter jugs of beer, half timber houses, you know, stuff like that. Reason being because after World War II, this place was occupied by the Americans and whatever they saw, they just kind of put in media. They're kind of like the most independent out of all that the German states. I mean, they even true? had their own king at one point. He went crazy and drowned himself. They have more of like a cat like background and Austria is kind of like their conjoined twin like they get they get along really well with Austria beautiful mountains here in fact the tallest mountain in all of Germany wow. Suchspitze is beautiful found here mountain. as well and no shocker they are really 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 known for beer there's like over 4,000 breweries here the oldest one in all of Germany is also found wow. here okay. and, you know all Germans kind of have their own opinions on Bavaria Otto von Bismarck even once said the Bavarian is the link between human and Austrian Berlin <laughs> also the capital of Germany. Well, Berlin is its own state and it's so small. You see the size of Berlin as a state compared to Bavaria, but Bavaria just sounds great. I know it's like it, like all these things that per, uh, per, uh, like the, it's the stereotypes of Germany, but those are all things I really like, man. The Lederhosen's look cool. I love beer. 
It looks like a great state. This is not only the largest city in Germany, but it's also one of the three city states, as in cities that are, are considered other states. Ones now, too? when I asked a lot of you German geography peeps to describe Berlin, a lot of you, even from Berlin, kind of said something along the lines of, Ugh, why do we even have this city? In 2003, former mayor Klaus Wolverite described Berlin as poor but sexy. It's pretty much the only capital city in all of Europe that costs more than it earns. As in, the entire country's GDP could be higher if Berlin didn't exist. And it's like you either love right? it or hate it. Geography Mara any, like, says it's in like this city because it's Germans so go to find themselves. Starving artists, aspiring EDM and techno musicians <laughs> trying to make a point while unemployed. No, but seriously, the city does have some cool sites, colorful art scene. What's yeah. weird though is you can still kind of see the distinction between East and West Berlin because it was split after the war. And it's kind of like a weird place where capitalism and communism coalesce in one location. I mean, I guess Berlin I is that. kind of like the a rebel punk rock teenager who locks himself in his room because his parents just don't understand him. Brandenburg, <laughs> capital Potsdam. Jagerpeep Jakob says, people joke that this state is the dead zone that surrounds Berlin. Berlin has more people than the entire state of Brandenburg. This is the first of the five states that make the former East Germany before the unification. It's kind of known as like the slow to get things done state, as in their airport was always supposed to be done this year, but they always say that like every year and it's been like 10 years. Oh, uh, let's see. Lots of former Prussian history here. Lots of cool stuff to see here though, like the Roman baths or the Cottbus castle, the Anderhavel city museum. They actually have like these cool medieval walls from the 14th century. One of the most notable sites being the palace of San Chusi. Lots of Eastern so Europeans live places. here, especially Polish. I mean, they are on the border with Poland. They're kind of like the sidekick of Berlin that like tags along and wants to join his punk rock band, I guess you could say. Bremen. This is actually another city state. Bremen? I never knew Bremen. Bremen is it too. It's broken up into Bremen and Bremerhaven. This is the smallest and least populated state in all of Germany at only about 660,000 people. Back in the day, it was labeled as a free Hanseatic city back when the Hanseatic League was a thing. That's a whole other thing we could talk about. Lots of marine culture here. Actually, that? people who want to become sailors come to Bremen and Bremerhaven. Mm. Beck's beer comes from here as well mm. as chocolate okay. beer, both of which many Germans hate. Let's see what else. Yeah, it's chocolate beer. I don't think I've even heard of that. Is that nice? Beck's, I've had before it, it's fine, but I am sure there's better, be better so beer have, in Germany. They have the Bremer Stadt music content statue. They have the only microgravity tower in Europe where you can experience nine seconds of weightlessness, eight mummified cool. bodies in glass coffins, and a memorial <laughs> block in the street dedicated to a female serial killer. Charming. But yeah, you know, Bremen is just kind of like this unique, quaint, yet always kind of competing with Hamburg state. Which brings us to really? Hamburg. Hamburg is the last of the three city states, and it is pretty much the richest state in all of Germany. <laughs> you gotta love these guys because people from Hamburg are called Hamburgers. Sometimes they're called the Venice of the North Sea because they have all these neighborhoods that are separated by canals and bridges. Like Bremen and Bremerhaven, they have... Yeah, that, that was the thing I read was that, that Hamburg has more uh, more canals than Venice or more bridges than Venice, I think. Something like that. But that's something I never knew about. I never knew it was its own state again, like Bremen. Uh, but pretty cool. Tell me more about that rivalry between Hamburg and Bremen. Uh, how does that like show itself? Do the people have that rivalry? Does it go into football as well? Uh, have interested a to know more. On the Elbe River, which gives them access to the sea, and they have a huge maritime culture, even though they are technically not on the sea. And they are getting quite a bit of attention these days because Hamburg is kind of like the IT capital of Germany right now. Mm, a lot okay. of you have also mentioned that they have the most famous red light district in all of Germany, the adult themed Reeperbahn. I did not know that. Lots I've of cool heard sites of the Reeperbahn before, though. actually. Oh, and think. they love fish here. Kind of like the uh, techie rich guy who loves his fish. Next up, Hess or Hessen capital Wiesbaden. Much of today's Hesse state belonged to the former Hessen duchy back in the day. It was an independent state all the way up until 1871. And they are most famous for Frankfurt. It has more skyscrapers than any other city and it has the busiest airport in all of Germany as well. And it is kind of like the business hub of Germany. It's home to so many corporate banks and financial institutions. Also home to the German stock exchange. Goethe, one of the most important writers in German history is from Frankfurt. When they love apples, especially drinks 
drinking it in various ways. They love apple cider. There's even a fountain that shoots apple wine at you. But yeah, Hess, Hessen is kind of like a, it's like the financial management brother of the family. Lower Saxony, capital Hanover. It's the second largest state in terms of area and it's called Lower Saxony because of the elevation, not because of the geographic location on the map. Get Keep that in mind. This state gets along very well with the Netherlands. This state kind of has like two cultures, the Plain Saxons and the Frisians, whom are related to the Frisians in the Netherlands. It's kind of like the country farmland area of Germany. They host a lot of fairs like the World Fair Expo in 2000. However, interestingly enough, you can also hear quite a bit of Plattdeutsch spoken here as well, which is the dialect that the Amish speak in the Americas. It's also the headquarters of Volkswagen, and they also have Volksburg, which is the city with the highest GDP per capita in the entire country. It's like the richest city. Mecklenburg, Vopolmen. Like already, man, like seeing these, you can really see the differences between these states. Uh, it's so much, it's not just the differences, actually, all of them have these like big, amazing cities. They all have so much going on. Like, it's really interesting. I love, I, as, as I said before, I just love these relationships they have with the, the countries they border as well and how that actually seeps into their lives and uh, how maybe how they are as people, like the people. Is there, is there differences between, like, say, Dutch people and Swiss people and Austrian people? And do, do those differences seep into Germany and, like, you know, people are, like, seem, like, quite Austrian even though they're from Germany or things like that, depending on the country they border? Capital Schwerin. This is actually the poorest state in Germany, and it is the second former East Germany state. As the name implies, Vopolmen, it was part of the former area known as Pomerania, which, yes, that's where the Pomeranian dog comes from. Some people joke that it should be called Mecklenburg for Poland, because it has a lot of Polish influence. It's right next to Poland. They even share and split this island with them called Usedom. It is very rural and sparsely populated. It has a lot of farmers and old people. In fact, it is disputably the oldest state in all of Germany. Tons of lakes here though. The largest lake completely within Germany is actually found here as well. They also have the largest island in all of Germany. Beautiful beaches, uh, cool places with like chalk cliffs. But yeah, mecklenburg vopolmen It's kind of like uh, the old angry grandpa that yells at the kids for running on his lawn. North <laughs> Rhineland, Westphalia. Capital, Dusseldorf. This is like the big daddy of Germany. It's the most populated with about 17 million. It's the powerhouse mm. industrial capital of Germany. Much of its economy was built off of coal mining in the beginning and today they have more companies and factories than anywhere else in Germany. People here have a deep-rooted Catholic culture, they love celebrating Carnival. The two biggest cities, Dusseldorf and Cologne, are always like competing with each other. There's really cool Frank Gehry architecture in Dusseldorf. Cologne has the Cologne Cathedral obviously and Cologne is kind of like the media capital of Germany. Much of the major studios can be found here. But yeah, overall the this state is kind of like the partying dad of Germany. Rhineland. <laughs> I like these comparisons and like uh, metaphors he's using for how these states as people but tell me more about that as well because I'm from Scotland like there's only the two main cities Glasgow and Edinburgh and there is a bit of a a bit of a rivalry and there's some banter between the two cities the people of the two cities always talking saying things about each other but because Germany has so many big cities you can see these little relationships between these big cities in the people of the city, uh, like popping up all over the country. Tell me where you're from. Tell me what city kind of rivals your city and what you think about the people from there. And one thing I just thought is like, if you're from Germany, what part of Germany that you're not from do you most like to visit or go on holiday or what's the most enticing place for you to actually go to that's not your own place. And Palatinate, capital, Mainz. This is kind of like the Mainz. younger brother of Rhineland, Westphalia, except they love wine. Like it's often argued that the best German wine can be found in this state. There's a lot of historical sites and castles, especially ones that date back to the days when France was always like invading and taking over. They also have the last bastion of Roman presence north of the Alps in the town of Trier. It's also the uh, birthplace of Karl Marx. They are known for liverwurst. It's kind of like the loyal sidekick of Rhineland Westphalia. Saarland, capital Saarbrücken. Besides the city states, it is the smallest state yeah, in so area. Small, Basically, the people Bavaria. here are like Frenchy Germans. The area was occupied by France after World War II, and they were actually their own independent state all the way up until 1957 when they decided to go back to Germany, which explains why the people here are really good at speaking French. Jacob Fiona says they are like the long lost uncle that you don't know how you're related to and speaks French. The most notable site, though, probably being 
the Fucklingen Ironworks. It's a massive rusting steel plant that is now wow. a UNESCO heritage site. Today it holds a museum, science center, and an auditorium for concerts. I wouldn't be surprised now if heavy metal amazing. concerts were a big thing here. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> Saxony, capital, Dresden. This is the third former East European state. Geography Thorsten explains it pretty well when he says, the Saxons are one of the oldest German tribes with having a lot of political influence in the early times of the Holy Roman Empire, and with some of them even creating something of what we now know today as England, mm -hmm. hence why many British people say that they are Anglo-Saxon, and why the English language is classified as a Germanic language. It kind of started here. Interesting, mm -hmm. right? This yeah. place is kind of known for having two things, great universities and very right-wing politics. They get along really well with Czechia slash the Czech Republic, whatever you like calling it. They have a minority group called the Sorbians, a Slavic people group, kind of related to the Czechs, and it's actually a language that is protected by the German government. Nonetheless, though, I've been told that the people here are really super nice. They have like that East German hospitality. It's just, you know, they're different from the rest of Germany, especially Lower Saxony. Like the two Saxonies have nothing to do with each other. Saxony and Halt. Capital Magdeburg. This is the fourth former East German state. It's often said that they call themselves the state that wakes up earlier. This is basically kind of like Saxony's chiller little sister. It's also <laughs> the birthplace of Martin Luther, who started the Protestant Reformation. Baroque composer Handel was born here. Uh, it is home to the Bauhaus movement, and they love Christmas here. They have a huge Christmas market and produce a lot of nutcrackers. When I was told, they are home to the mountain of Brocken, which on April 30th becomes the site of the Walpurgisnacht, a night of dancing with witches based off of the story by Goethe. Schleswig-Holstein, capital Kiel, named after the two duchies that worked together for centuries. It is the only bi-coastal state in Germany with coasts along the North Sea and the Baltic. And it's basically huh? like the Denmark of Germany. There's a lot of Danish people here, Danish-speaking people here, and it's actually a protected, recognized language. Uh, you can greet people here by saying moin moin. And the cool thing is, on the North Sea coastline on the west side, they have the largest cohesive tidal flats in the world. A natural world heritage site, twice a day the tide recedes, exposing a massive mud flat. Of course, no surprise, fishing and sailing are huge out here. They actually have a huge sailing competition every year. Yeah, the people here are kind of known for being like tall, animal herding people that are really quiet, like they don't talk much. And finally, Turingi. This is like, the more I find out about Germany, like it's actually such a complex cu country, like it really is, I never knew there was just so much to it, like, as I, I mentioned many times, I'm from the UK and although you can break down the UK into different, like, regions and different uh, parts of the, the country, I feel like Germany is so much more diverse and like the differences between these uh, these states are so apparent and so vast compared to the differences between British people. Like, I think the only thing that really is so apparent in the UK is the the dialect and our the way we speak can vary a lot between the uh, the different regions, but. Germany, when it comes to the culture, food, language, everything's so much more, like, strongly uh, differentiated. Yeah, or Thuringen, capital Erfurt, the last and final state of former East Germany. This place is probably most famous for the city of Weimar. As Jakob Thorsten says, it is the home of Johann Wolfgang Goethe and Friedrich von Schiller. Their works in the so-called Sturm und Drang era was so influential that it was manifested in a saying about Germany. Germany is the country of poets and thinkers. They were kind of like the Shakespeare's of Germany back in the day. Much of their writing actually influenced a lot of words and phrases for modern German that is spoken today. The composer Bach was born here. You can see his house. And interesting, they have a lot of caves here as well, like these. And uh, they're known for having really good food here as well. They have like these potato dumpling things. And all Germans love Thuringian style bratwurst. Mm, it's uh, it's, it's so they're famous good. for it. So there you go. Those are the 16 states of Germany. However, a lot of you guys also mentioned two other things. The Spanish Balearic Island, Mallorca. Mallorca? A lot of Germans jokingly call this the 
17th Bundeslander. This <laughs> is a hot spot for Germans and they flock to this place all year round. Tons British of people do too. live here. A lot of the street signs and shop signs and billboards are written in German. People have lived on this island never learning a word of Spanish and they've been fine. Uh, yeah, the Germans love this island. <laughs> uh, back in Cold War times, Cuba kind of like said, oh, we're gonna give you this island. Cayos Blanco del Sur named Ernst Talmand Island. But then like Cuba was like, oh, it was just like a symbolic thing. We didn't actually give it to you. And then Germany was like, eh, yeah, fine, whatever. Keep that island. So that is it. So yeah, I mean, in conclusion, for Germany, you gotta hand it to them. They've gone through so much in the past century and it's almost miraculous how much they've moved forward. Whether you're Bavarian or Mecklenburg, Vopalmen. Hope you like this video. Thank you. Danke schön. Stay cool. Stay tuned. Really enjoyed that. Like again, after watching the first geography now, I then said I want to watch something that tells me a bit more about the states, which this video did. Now I want to find out even more about each individual state. I want to do like a deep dive into each of them because although that was a great video, it just gave me so much more questions. I just want to know more, like get a deeper understanding of each state because actually each state is so distinct and I can tell there's going to be so much to learn about each state itself. Uh, everything from the city states like Hamburg, Bremen and Berlin to all the other states and everything that is like in their history and their culture it all intrigues me and it all really makes me excited to find out about it it's like they're all so interesting uh, so tell me what you think about it tell me what you think about each state where are you from tell me more tell me some interesting stuff about your state and yeah recommend which video or which state i should learn about first thanks